Did Trump getting elected save the housing market? Well, maybe, maybe not. We're about to find out. It did, although, create a large amount of optimism in the market. I'm gonna tell you about that here in a second. We're gonna go through some of the changes that may be coming up here in the housing market very soon. Jeremy Knight, the Knight Group, your favorite Austin realtor. What's really interesting is that I actually put out quite a few surveys to see who was excited about this, who was not excited about this. And it was pretty interesting to see. So first things first, let's talk about the bond situation. So it just came out the other day that the Fed is going to indeed reduce rates one more time, a quarter percent. And immediately from the election to, to this news, interest rates actually went up pretty much almost instantly. Yet in the last two days, we've actually seen rates drop down. In fact, this says 6.98. They were actually 6.98. 6.92 as of the Friday when we left. So immediately we see the bond market react and go up and now it's coming back down. What's interesting about rates is rates usually follow the 10-year treasury yield and not what happens with the Fed funds rate. Now, I know a lot of people want to say, okay, the Fed's dropping rates. That means that this is going to drop. Well, that's not the case. Now, what's interesting is if we actually look at the bond market, so this was back in what 912 we saw the bond market at the lowest numbers if we look at the interest rates where interest rates were around 912 917 they were at their lowest so usually once you see the bonds drop a little bit then you start to see some movement in the interest rates so that's what we're seeing here so immediately we saw rates down back down to 6.92 so are they going to continue to do that? Well, the 10-year treasury as of today looks like it is down slightly. So we may continue to see a trend downward in interest rates. Now, this might drive more buyers into the market. Now, what's interesting is I, our good friend Reventure just put a video out legitimately. I think I saw it today. And one couple of things that he was talking about was talking about that we're going to see a huge increase in foreclosures that Trump's going to get rid of some of the protections for foreclosures. I don't know that that's really going to happen. He also was really still pushing the crash narrative while at the same time realizing that there's a lot of pent up buyer demand. So I think short term, what's gonna happen is usually we get to the end of the year here and we start to see people back in the market. And why is that? Well, rates start to drop. And if we look at the Austin housing numbers, we actually saw that over the last couple of months, we've actually saw more people jump back in the market. And that's because interest rates did the thing that we saw them do, which is we saw them come down, you know, not too long ago into the six range. So if we see these continue to drop, yes, there'll be more, more people back in the market. But what's interesting is that we're also going to see more people back in the market because at the beginning of the year, you're going to see more inventory than what we've seen in a typical year. And you're going to see rates lower. Now, if we look at rates last year at this time, if we look at rates in December of last year, rates were around seven point in, in December, we're about 7.09%. And in Austin, we've seen a ton of inventory hit the market. Now, not every market's going to be like that. The Austin market obviously is a little bit different. So if we see rates drop even further over the next few days, imagine that more people will get in there. But let's talk about consumer confidence because this is really, really important. Now, consumer confidence in the housing market is on the rise, hitting the highest point since nearly 2022, since early 2022, according to Fannie Mae's latest home purchase index. In October, 20% of consumers felt it was a good time to buy a home, making it slight increase. However, 64% still believe it's a good time to sell. And this is one of the things that I think why we're going to see more buyers in the market and maybe not short term increases in home prices, but we're going to see more home sellers hit the market over the next couple of months. I know I personally have had more home sellers reach out, but there's more confidence for consumers. And I'm going to show you what people are saying. There's more confidence for buying consumers and selling consumers, which means that that whole thing where we had people were locked up to their to their mortgage rates are probably going to be putting their homes on the market. However, 64% believe it is a good time to sell. Expectations about home prices remain steady with 39% predicting they'll go up in the next year while 23 expect them to drop 23%. Increasingly, fewer consumers now believe mortgage rates will decline 
over the next 12 months, dropping from 42 to 39%. While those expectation rates rise, also fell to a new survey low of 22%. So Mark Palm with Fannie Mae, which is pretty interesting is Fannie Mae actually saw an increase in its stock price because people are assuming that Trump is going to actually privatize Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, which is what he said he wanted to do previously. And if they do that, it's going to actually have investors buying up Fannie Mae, which means that they're making it more private. So there's a lot of people buying up the Fannie Mae stock. In fact, we can actually look at that. Yeah, up today, 2.29, up uh, what, 6% just today alone. So yeah, the Fannie Mae is definitely jumping up. People are buying Fannie Mae stock as of right now. Now, back to this. So Mark Phelan with Fannie Mae, chief economist, explains that while confidence is improving, high home prices continue to make many consumers hesitant about buying. Meanwhile, the prolonged period of elevated prices is slowly nudging more people towards renting, especially with rent growth expected to stay modest. Consumers also feel secure about their jobs, with 79% of employed respondents confident in their job stability over the next year, up from 77%. As consumer sentiment shifts, we could see more people turning to rentals while they save for future home purchases. So when I put this survey out, basically I said, poll question, are you now more or less optimistic about the housing market after the election results? One person was not happy, obviously, that's fine. But almost everybody unanimously said, yes, more, 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 no doubt more. Now, again, a lot of these are real estate agents. Brad had a really good point here. He said, level optimism overall, unaffected. Getting past the election was going to help short term, no matter what, in my opinion. I believe the Fed will act independently unless a new administration takes extreme actions to change that. Can't see a legal option for that. Now, keep in mind, I just said that, that the bond market is what is affecting mortgage rates. Now, Cutting the, the the Fed fund rate will help banking with lending, but not necessarily mortgage rates, as we've seen. I don't think the Harris 25K for first time home buyers would have done anything based on on that. Um, anyway, so he went say that you know people are probably going to assume that Trump's going to have a stronger economy. Really good points there as well. But a lot of people seem a little more optimistic than not. And then I also did this poll on my YouTube channel here and. I basically said, you know, our people feel more. And it's about 48% said yes. Many said that it is still too early. So obviously that there's that hesitation out there. And 15% said no. Curious your thoughts. Do you think that the housing market is going to get better because of these election results? So let's talk about mortgages here for a second because mortgages are really important. The bond market plays a big role in setting interest rates, including a mortgage rate. Recently, bond yields spiked on election night as a result began to solidify, pushing rates to the highest levels in months. But within two days, rates dropped below 7%. I just said that. So, so what is behind the shift? The bond market anticipated election outcomes well in advance and post-election adjustments were more of a formal response to the lasting change. Today's rate drop was driven by mortgage lenders catching up to a, a recent bond market gains as they cautiously waited to see if improvements would hold before the adjustment rates. While the rate recovery is welcome, it doesn't signal an ongoing downward trend. Mortgage rates will face pressure from broader economic data and inflation with upcoming reports from the CPI, retail sales, and other things. Now, one thing that I found really interesting, though, was this article from, and you know, I've done a lot of research on this to see what was going to happen, what's not going to happen. Mortgage rates surge higher, but they've obviously come down. I anticipate they're going to trickle down back into the six and a half percent range over the, before the end of the year. You tell me. But the National Association of Home Builders congratulated the president-elect with a statement from its chairman, Carl Harris, saying that NAB, NHB looks forward to working with the incoming Trump administration and leaders in Congress from both parties to enact a pro-housing legislative and regulatory agenda that increases the nation's housing supply and ease the nation's affordability woes. Now, I found this pretty interesting because some of the things that we've actually talked about with 
with what Trump has been doing is that you had Harris who was going to give a $25,000 credit, which come, was coming from taxpayers. I actually ran into one of the Austin city council members at the Eminem concert of all places. And I asked her, you know, what, how her reelection was going. Obviously she is very in favor of Kamala Harris and using taxpayer dollars to subsidize builders. And so I asked her, I, she said, I'm really excited that Kamala Harris is going to, you know, work on affordability. And so I asked her, I go, do you think that it would be a better idea to actually incentivize builders by reducing the red tape, by reducing what they're spending in order to get them to come back? And, and because the reality is, is that when a builder has less headway to get a home built, they can build it faster and for cheaper. And those costs actually do get you know, passed on to the consumer. When those things cost more, then those costs get passed on to the consumer. And I asked her and she kind of looked at me with deer and headlights look. Her name was, I think, Marissa Fontanet, Fontes. Uh, she's the uh, she's on the east side there. And I think that's the problem with Austin in general. You can tell me if I'm wrong, but a lot, it seems like, and this is what I was telling her, is like, there's all this push to take tax dollars to subsidize for affordable living and not necessarily incentivizing by less red tape and quicker build times. So interesting information there. You tell me, is this going to be really good for Trump in the economy? Are you happy about the results? Are you mad about the results? You tell me in the comment section. We'll see you in the next video.